that. Meanwhile, it looks like Mannerheim is just kind of cap, cap, capping away here. Looks like he even got some kills, some riflemen down here. Um, capping everything. So, entire southern ha half of the map now going to Mannerheim. Mannerheim moving around, moving around. He wants to get somebody else up here pretty soon, but... Uh, score, by the way, for anyone who wasn't keeping track, 270 to Johnny and 254 to Mannerheim. And here we have it. Now everybody's like, all right, we're going to take a breather. I'm going to switch on over to, to uh, Mannerheim here. Uh, everybody just took a breather and uh, activated their main game-winning ability. And you'll see this is why I like the fact that he has a King Tiger out. Having a King Tiger out is just your final late-game solution. We've already shown that Stugs and Pioneers is really cool. And salvage is going on up here, by the way. Always important to run around and salvage things. A uh, good way to get back uh, manpower and whatnot and fuel and all that jazz from what you uh, wrecked buildings you can find. Sorry, wrecked vehicles. So, King Tiger's moving up. And uh, he's got a pretty good idea that there's a huge freaking army coming down here because he just lost his bunker to it. So this King Tiger is getting ready to make a big first impression. And kind of the pressure's on here. You can just feel it in the air. I think... Uh, Johnny has no idea what's up, so King Tiger is like, all right, better make this good. I got one shot at this. Boom! Oh, he's got three kills right off the bat. So the King Tiger is just starting his impressions really well. Uh, Johnny's got to react to this and say, oh, crap, I was kind of hoping uh, there'd be a whole bunch of uh, pioneers down here. That's what was here last time. Uh, so King Tiger now swinging around, taking some shots. Stug's going to move in for the tank, uh, to tank, literally just getting out right up in front here. And it looks like we got a massive flank of uh, engineers with uh, bazookas, but unfortunately they are being met by a big chunk of pioneers with flamethrowers. It looks like the pioneers kind of shifted away from them a little bit too early. Uh, there's a couple of bazooka engineers left here that are not dead. Meanwhile, the flamethrowers are just flaming everywhere, flaming all over the place. And now propaganda is going down. Great use of propaganda mid-fight, uh, just to give a little bit of an advantage. Uh, we can see here that the Stug is busy chasing away this Sherman tank. The skilled tank destroyer, however, is doing some serious damage to the Stug. And, oh, <laughs> Sticky Bomb goes off, destroys the engine, and boom, there we go. Uh, that thing goes down. Damaged engine, surely a Sticky Bomb at some point landed on the King Tiger during that fighting. And uh, for the most part, the, uh, the, uh, the Pioneers have, have won this. They were able to take care of all of that junk. Pioneers versus off-map reinforcements, really good if they have their flamethrowers out. Especially since most of those units were carrying bazookas, which is not terribly effective against uh, infantry and that sort of thing. King Tiger looking around to make some damage here. Oh, serious, seriously damaged uh, skilled tank destroyer. I don't think this King Tiger is going to be able to keep up. Uh, he uh, seems to be carrying a building with him. Uh, some chunk of a building. Is that part of a vehicle? Yeah, I think that's actually half of a truck in front of him. So half of a truck kind of stuck to the front of that thing. You got a little bit of a uh, truck on your face there, King Tiger. Anyhow, so you'll see that these pioneers were clever enough to go and pick up Browning automatic rifles and uh, a bazooka. This squad even has a, <laughs> a bazooka and a Browning. And uh, they're just going to go ahead and hunt down these tanks now. And this is, they were missing Panzer Shreks before, sorry, Panzer Fausts before. And uh, now they have what it takes. Boom! Destroying the engine. Boom, and killing the Sherman. So just these two little guys say, oh, by the way, you know, we were in the neighborhood. We thought we'd kill your Sherman and then uh, gut your corpse and make money out of it. So really good looking stuff there. And the King Tiger is just slugging away at these troops. It's true they've got sticky bombs and he really needs to look out for that. Uh, but it looks like we've got uh, a little bit of propaganda going down. And once again, you can see these little leaflets blowing in the wind. Oh, I just missed them all. And uh, here comes our skilled tank destroyer now, almost fully repaired, oddly enough. King Tiger just slugging away here. If you're not familiar with these numbers on the right-hand side that I'm pointing at down here, by the way, that's the relative effectiveness against various types of uh, units. It goes from 0 to 9, and it's important to note that uh, King Tiger has a 12 effectiveness on a scale of 0 to 9. and has a 12 against infantry. So uh, the infantry either need to close in fast and sticky bomb it, and uh, you'll see here they can't. Closing in fast means getting burned alive by thousands and thousands of pioneers, and uh, this is really... Uh, this is really a difficult late game army to fight as an infantry commander because uh, pioneer spamming is so anti-infantry. Uh, just mass flamethrowers are just so so good. I kind of think you 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 want to see uh, infantry attrition or something in order to be able to keep up with that. Ranger spam with infantry attrition might be good. Uh, that sort of thing. Haven't seen a lot of artillery shelling going on either. That could be very effective. Uh, nor have I really seen just a little bit of machine gun nest or anything like that. Maybe back teching at one point to a weapon support center, having just, you know, one or two machine guns out there just so you could, you know, 
uh, you know, support your infantry a little bit better. Suppressing a ton of pioneers as they come running around the corner is a great way to buy yourself some time so you can back off and fight them from a distance, that sort of thing. So that seems like a natural pairing that I have yet to really see going on here, especially since... Um, especially since I'm not really sure where I was going with that. So I'll just, you know, take a sip of Coke and pretend that I meant to have silence right there. Anyhow, so we've got some mines going down. Uh, let's see, Mannerheim is just kind of gloriously taking control of all this. Look at these flame engineers! Triple flame engineers with flamethrowers, flaming the flaming gentlemen with their flaming flamethrowers of flame and fire. Uh, just doing their thing here. Quickly splitting up, qu quickly capping points. One thing to note, by the way, with, with pile spamming, um, when you have a big ball of pioneers, I didn't quite point it out earlier on because there was a million other things happening and nice little mine placement there. I love that. Um, but you'll notice when Mannerheim moves up with a huge group of guys and engages uh, some enemies on top of a point, he always picks one pioneer off and has it start capping the point just right at the beginning of the battle. So by the end of the fight, it's already done. So we've got mines going everywhere. There are three mines currently being constructed here. Uh, another one there. I have no idea. Another one, two more right there. So just kind of laying mines all over the place. Uh, good habits of good players. I've pointed this stuff out before, but when you have control of territory that you suspect you might lose soon because it's more than you can really control, uh, which is kind of the case here. He's a little overextended, but honestly, it's going to be the left-hand side, not the right-hand side that he loses uh, because of all this infantry coming around the corner here. But uh, it's always good to mine it up because then when you retreat away from it, people are going to stumble over your mines. Uh, it makes it a little bit more costly to invade. Uh, we'll see that Vet 2 is going up for uh, tanks right now as, long, uh, as well as another Stug coming out. You can see the flaps here are just kind of permanently blown upwards. I think those get blown out when the engine gets destroyed and they never really reset. You can see he got a little bit of a telephone pole stuck to his tires there. No problem. I'm just going to sit this King Tiger in the center of the map. So things have calmed down a little bit. Looks like we're building up for another mass attack. Uh, you can see, God, I love this, <laughs> I love this bar and uh, bazooka duo here running around. Building up for another mass attack and uh, there's a lot of... Uh, cloaked units just kind of sitting around here, so it's kind of hard to scout and see what's going on. King Tiger, however, is just absolutely not worried about any of that. Serious damage here. Let's see if he gets another shot off. No, he's going to shoot everybody else. Firing away at the infantry. The infantry mm, not going to be doing so well here. These guys even just taking a break in the middle of combat. Like, yep, just going to get back to Walden stuff. And here we go. Surprise from the riflemen from Johnny Crypto as they're going to taking some shots. Uh, very quick to retreat, not losing any units here. And uh, the King Tiger now is going to try and support them. Firing away. Boom! Doing some serious damage here to the infantry. Uh, four infantry left there. They're retreating. Stuff's look, looking pretty good. 22 kills for the King Tiger, by the way. Another big chunk of riflemen up here, but they are so seriously dead. Oh, that just killed the whole squad right there. I love how you can see that little glowing shell. I don't know if that's just my graphics or what, but boom! See that little glowing shell just drive right into the right into the skilled tank destroyer there. Taking some parting shots, just whiffing that last shot. And nearly a, a perfect health King Tiger here. 24 kills, just going to sit here. Uh, this is the main entrance point. You'll notice that the uh, bunker is back again with mines everywhere. He's completely shut off the front of this base. Going to go over here and probably try and cap this uh, munitions point. And uh, meanwhile, just kind of hanging out. Just kind of hanging out. All is quiet on the western front. And capping. This is kind of important to go around here. These are all very wounded units back there. Taking some shots. Oh, hoping that maybe he can get a final shot on this skilled tank destroyer who zips right around the corner at the last moment there. <laughs> These guys run around just picking up ordnance. Oh, a couple of riflemen just stick their head out to take some shots and are instantly launched into the air by the King Tiger. He's now going to whiff a few shots into the dirt and uh, see what he can do. So, uh, really, Johnny Crypto is in some trouble here. Johnny Crypto pretty much had his two major victories. And in spite of all of that, the uh, combination of late game pioneers and armor is just proving a little bit too much for his uh, infantry abilities. Looks like off-map reinforcements was activated once again, which is undoubtedly what some of these units are at the very least. Trying to repair this, uh, repair the remains of this skilled anti-tank uh, 
M10. M10 Wolverine. Sorry. Getting distracted watching all this other stuff going on. So, uh, Vet 3 Rifleman really needs to get out of there. Just go ahead and get that guy back home. I know they're holding the fort over here, but he needs to go home pretty soon. So, uh, here we have the off-map reinforcements backed by the skilled tank destroyer. It looks like it's going to stab on out for one last big hurrah. And, oh, right off the bat, uh, looks like both of the engineers get taken out with that. Skilled tank destroyer looping around, giving them the old loop-de-loop, -loop, trying to fire at the rear armor there and blocking them off. Meanwhile, all of these engineers getting uh, just <laughs> absolutely just getting hit with propaganda, trying to do their best to try and uh, fire their bazookas at close range while this kill tank destroyer drives around and around. No luck whatsoever. King Tiger has just no problem taking care of that. And it looks like artillery is getting called in. Artillery calling in. King Tiger backing away, backing away, everybody backing away, honestly. And, and, oh, massive, massively upgraded artillery. Miss, 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 miss. Oh. Looking artillery. Mm. Sorry, I just like to appreciate the graphics every now and then because that's going to go off. You know, there's going to be no fighting, and unfortunately, King Tiger had no problem maneuvering away from that. Uh, lesson to be learned here: get a sticky bomb on that thing. If you're going to try an artillery shell, a uh, a King Tiger, make sure you have a uh, sticky bomb damaging or destroying its engine first. I love this. Look at the uh, triply upgraded Stug charging in here. Literally tanking for the King Tiger. He's just going to sit up here and absorb all of the rocket shots that he possibly can while the King Tiger does all the damage uh, while the uh, Pioneers are going to be just kind of doing their thing. Look at this flaming Stug just like, yep, I'm on fire and running you over. Just, you know, a little bit of added insult to injury. Uh, but it's perfectly capable of sustaining this kind of damage. Meanwhile, it looks like the engineers are just kind of running out. Now that these uh, this big off-map re reinforcements blob has been really, really wounded, uh, Pioneers are just very happy to come running on in here, doing whatever damage they can, and uh, letting the Stug and King Tiger just fire wildly. Um, and it looks like that's pretty much going to be good game here. Uh, unfortunately, you can tell that almost all these units are just single units and pairs of units. Grabbing bazookas at the last second, trying to do the best they can, but uh, this pile ball here is just going to be enough to finish them all off here. So, But yeah, it's very important that if you're going to try and take out a King Tiger with artillery, then make sure you sticky bomb it first. It's almost always going to be a complete waste otherwise. Uh, earlier replay, I believe Stefan Haynes had a really elegant kill against a Tiger, not a King Tiger, using the exact same... Uh, technique. If you want to see that replay, go ahead and check it out. It's kind of early on. I forget who it was against. But uh, he camouflaged his rifleman, snuck up behind it, threw a sticky bomb, and then while the tiger was trying to figure out what was going on, he dropped the artillery down on the damaged uh, damaged engine tiger. So, ah, and there we have it. So these guys are kind of chatting out, chatting it out a little bit. Let me go ahead and just fast forward this a little bit here, because I think we're going to see one last off-map reinforcements, along with a sniper, oddly enough. That's not, you know... Not terrible. I mean, you know, you just kind of get it randomly. So, hey, why not? Big old sniper in the middle of all that. So, big ball. The two of them are just kind of politely chit-chatting. Uh, always be aware of this, by the way. Sometimes players... I, I don't. I, I think Johnny is a fantastic player, but um, there's a little bit of deception possibility. My God! <laughs> with just kind of having some polite chit-chat and being like, Oh, by the way, I'm going to attack you with my ultimate ability once again. Uh, just kind of a big, huge suicide rush. Look at that wonderful water plume there. Uh, double Vet 3 Stugs out here, though. These things are just frickin' tin cans. Uh, and unfortunately, he just kind of does this drive-by with his army and loses huge, you know, non-trivial amounts of his army uh, just kind of getting them into position. So I think maybe maybe Johnny really has given up here. He doesn't care. He knows the game is over. He's preparing. He just wants to have a little bit of good chat. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm a huge Day 9 fan, as you all know. And he's, he often talks, talks about this with, you know, he says that, you know, at the end of a big match, when you have a big, long, stressful match, here we are at a 45-minute long game, it's really important not just to be like, and quit the game and leave frustrated, but just to sit here and talk. And you notice that these two people, totally professional, well-mannered, and, and he's just kind of talking and getting it out of his system and kind of clearing his head and kind of going over already while he's still in the game, just kind of talking about what happened. And I think those are habits of really good, effective players as well, is that they don't just bundle up, you know, their frustration with the game and leave right away. But he's just kind of like, ooh, boy, that was a good game. Uh, you know, he's just going to throw these units out here because why not? It's fun. But uh, pretty much uh, they're all done and just kind of chit-chatting about all that sort of stuff. And uh, just a big old massive tank fest here. Uh, suppression coming from this uh, King Tiger or, or the combination of all of the above, perhaps. Uh, a little bit of propaganda. And now the tank's just driving on in. boop a doop a doop a doop a doo Ah, uh, love that. So anyhow, that's the end of the game. I hope you enjoyed it. I am Harlequin Coho. Uh, good night, good game, good luck, and if you enjoyed this, please do subscribe. 
Take care.